audience. So I want to welcome Mike. Hi, Mike. So great to see you, my dear. You're looking beautiful. Oh, Mike. my gosh. I have to tell the story. Um, you know, I, I met Mike um, from my past couple years going to song school in Colorado. And he is just this amazing, amazing performer, rock, ballads. And um, we met, and then I guess he and Paul um, and Ise Barnwell um, were thinking about how we could start a song school in Italy. And we almost made it, Mike. Two weeks. I know. Yep. I we, we, oh, it will be again. I can't I wait, know. and we'll all be together in uh, Elazi, Italy, uh, as soon as possible. I know. What a dream, and I do look forward to going back there and being with you. Um, Jean -Pierre, I understand... By the way, jean and Martina all asked me to give them uh, you. You're the best. They're probably watching if they're still awake. It's a few hours later than <laughs> Italy. They all wish me a happy new year, and they're excited about the this live stream. So thank you. That was just well, an we'll amazing time. To them. So this evening, you are a uh, part of your group here is Justin on bass and Jared on fiddle. That's right. So Jared we'll Reynolds and Justin Wright joining me from the uh, Longleaf Drive Bluegrass Band from Destin, Florida. Fantastic. So what are you going to play for us? It's uh, This is a song that people know this as my personal theme song, and uh, I hope everybody listening uh, will sing along. gonna get there when I get there mama I'm coming home I'll get there when I get there baby I was born to roam I'll get there when I get there I just can't be there now I'll get there when I get there honey as soon as I can figure out how the best laid plans of my sin man where well, they often go awry doesn't seem to be much use sitting around thinking about why Just keep on pushing forward Gonna put the pedal to the floor I'll get there when I get there Honey, in a couple of days Or more, could be more Help me sing it, boys I'm gonna get there when I get there Mama, I miss you so I'll get there when I get there I'm running late, I know I get there when I get there, ain't too big on punctuality. I get there when I get there, honey, in a couple of days, or three or four or five or six or seven or twelve. Jared, come on! Climbing up the canyon, got bright angels by my side. Inch by inch, step by step, ain't got no mule to ride. I left the ranch in darkness, now the blazing sun's above. I'll get there when I get there, but someone give me a shove. I need a little help. Get there when I get there, Mama, I'm coming. I'll get there when get there but it seems so far to go i'll get there when i get there god curse this add i'll get there when i get there eventually one more time jared Jerry Reynolds on the fiddle. Soon I'll meet St. Peter. I'm just made that way. But I got people to see, and they've been waiting on me, and I know just what they'll say. He'll be late to his own funeral, and on my dying day, I'll get there when I get there, running the other way. Help me sing it, world. I'm gonna get there when I get there. The Lord is gonna bring me home. Heaven's gonna open up, gave me my favorite song. I'll get there when I get there, when I see those pearly gates. I'll get there when I get there, but you know I'll be running late. I just hope it ain't today. But we don't close that gate. Wow, 
now, Mike. <laughs> That's called I'll Get There When I Get There, as you probably already knew. Well, I know, but I love it. And you're right. It's your theme song. I think we've sung yeah. about every time we've all been <laughs> together. <laughs> I love it. it just Thanks for having me on, up. guys. Man, what a, what a great what way to open. Like? Woo. Well, our next guest, I guess, how long is, have you two been friends? Uh, tell us a John McCutcheon story. Well, I tell you. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't. For as long as I can remember. Uh, we first met in about 1972 or three. Uh, I was teaching my first instrument making class at the Augusta Heritage Arts Workshop in West Virginia. And uh, uh, John's girlfriend at the time, Judy, was in the class. And she made him his first hammer dulcimer. And that's how far back we go. And then John became the ultimate master of the hammer dulcimer. I played the hammer dulcimer for a long time, but never reached the heights of John McCutcheon. Uh, and uh, we became fast friends. And we've got done so much over the last, uh, what, that's like almost 50 years now, John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Now, now, John. Get out my now, well, I, one of the things I remember was sitting around the shop. This was probably the following year. And we were trying to think up a name for the group that was eventually Trapezoid. Oh, right. And my favorite name was Peter, Paul, and Sam. <laughs> <laughs> My fa my favorite was uh, the self rising meadow muffins. Yeah, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, John! All those instruments back there. But I have to ask one question: Who is uh -huh. the gentleman that's in the frame behind you? This guy right here. Yeah, that guy right there. That is oh, this. The stuff on the wall back here are some of my favorite old time instruments. Um, but I've got stuff on all kinds of walls, um, and uh, the fellow. Is also one of they had a lot of pictures of my mentors, and this fellow is a fellow by the name of Nimrod Workman, and he was a West Virginia coal miner mm. um, who worked in in the coal mines of Mingo County, West Virginia, back in the early teens and twenties of the twentieth century, and was just involved in everything. He worked with Mother Jones and John L. Lewis wow. to bring the United Mine Workers into the state of West Virginia, which was no small feat. Fought in the Battle of Blair Mountain, which was 100 years ago this year. Uh, wow. First time aerial bombing was ever used was against West Virginia, and by United States Air Force, was against West Virginia coal miners at the Battle of Blair Mountain. And um, he and I became friends in about, about the same time Paul and I did. Um, and um, he lived a long life. I attended his 99th birthday party. And he was a great, great singer, and he wrote, and he was a storyteller, and, and uh, a real character. So uh, my buddy my greatest, did. What's that? My greatest memory of uh, music with Nimrod is we were having a jam session with Martin Bogan and Armstrong. Uh -huh. and Nimrod walks up and starts singing, but a totally different song at the same time. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that story. And I, I say that because he reminds me of my grandfather, who was also a coal miner. My mother's a true coal miner's daughter from down in the southern parts of uh, West Virginia, down in Bishop. Yeah. Um, and they just, I don't know, they lived, they lived a, a very different life. And um, I know that that's something that she ingrained in, in us, you know those kinds of values. So ladies and gentlemen, John McCutcheon, what are you gonna, do, what are you gonna sing for us this evening? Um, well, being as this is all about songwriting, this has been a really productive time for me, this pandemic. I came home um, in mid-March from a tour in Australia and um, because I'd been overseas and I was on an airplane, for, you know, that flying Petri dish for about 24 hours getting back from there, I uh, quarantined myself um, up at a little cabin that my wife Carmen, who's also a writer, and I have up in the North, North Georgia mountains. And I started writing, and um, in those three weeks, wrote 18 songs and then put it out on an album. And since, the, and, and uh, all those of y'all who are writers out there, you know that when you get on a roll writing, you just don't ever want it to end. And so I've been writing every day since then. And um, I'm just about to release another album of quarantine songs. Um, and this is the title song. Yeah. 
In my younger days, I compiled a laundry list All the mighty dreams and daring deeds my heart could not resist Places I must visit, all the deeds that must be done A bucket list, check off one by one Stonehenge at the solstice, Grand Canyon's rim at dawn, the opera house in Sydney with the new year coming on. Tierra del Fuego with the salt sea in my face, the aurora in Alaska, where you feel the press of space. A festival in Senegal with the core in the air, December in Machocon with monarchs everywhere. The labyrinth at Chartres Cathedral, the hush of Vesper song. Dusk at Machu Picchu, and every soul is gone. Early morning on the bitter root, a rainbow on my line. The ancient plains of Tuva, their throats singing lost in time. The campfire cliff top. Fiddle music through the night and the wailing wall, Jerusalem, in the evening's fading light. To sit with honor's elders and to hear their tales and songs. To find a place of peace at last where I know that I belong. If everywhere I've ventured, wherever I did roam, I've never found a place as sweet as home. So turn the bucket over, I'm done. I traveled this earth over and I had a world of fun. With wonders I have witnessed, the victories I've won. Of all life's great adventures, you're the one. Of all life's great adventures, you're the one. Let's so turn the bucket over, I'm Oh my gosh, Sean. You know, it's, it's interesting. I was um, reading quite a few um, reviews and sort of bios about you. And while they talk about the fact that you are this amazing instrumentalist, um, songwriter, um, uh, you know, activist in many ways, but the most important and every, every single review that I read said that you were this just amazing storyteller that you're able to just capture the heart, um, you know, of people, of an event, of a time and a place. And I guess that's why uh, 30 albums and uh, how many how many Grammy nominations later? Oh, I am a six-time Grammy loser. Oh, <laughs> oh. not in our hearts, yes, not yeah. in our hearts. So it's just really an honor to have you here singing that and Bucket List. Tell me a little bit about your inspiration here. Uh, well, my wife and I were sitting around um, at, uh, at our cabin, the aforementioned little log cabin up in the North mm -hmm. Georgia mountains. And I have to share my favorite Georgia joke okay. that I just read in the, in the Atlanta paper today. Uh, this black man and a, and a Jewish man walk into a bar. Bartender says, hello, senators. <laughs> Um, and we were we were sitting uh, up there, and I just looked across at her, and I just thought, "Wow, I've done a lot of things in my life, but nothing quite so amazing as being able to sit in this room with this woman." So oh. that's where it came from. So it's a love song, obviously. Yes. Beautiful, John. Very much Beautiful, so, my friend. Thanks. Our relationships do age; they age like fine wine, and just. I think as we get older, we do begin to um, find that appreciation uh, for the things that are very present with us. Um, well, and and um, as as you all have no doubt found out, 
this uh, this pandemic has been a real test. <laughs> <laughs> I think for a lot of people, yes. I mean, I've never I've never spent ten months with Carmen. I've never mm -hmm. hell, I've never spent ten months with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I never spent ten months with myself even. No. <laughs> Oh, but we, you know what? I think we've learned some new skills. And we, we certainly have. I mean, look at this. I mean, we're so hungry to get together. We're willing to do this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but we're so grateful, and we're so glad that yeah. you're with us tonight, yes, uh, thank both you, you and Mike. And so I think, Paul, oh, we always like to um, keep a, a focus on children and the creativity that kids have. Um, so we often feature uh, songs that have been written by kids through Kid Pen Alley. Um, we've been, this past week, uh, working in New Hampshire at Mastway Elementary School, and I know that Pam Felber is in the audience. She's this amazing music teacher who has really um, helped us find a place there. And the children, these fourth grade kids, you know, they are just so, they just get it. They understand what's going on, but they're not looking back. They're looking towards the future um, and what it's, what it's going to be like when COVID is finally over. And um, they're humorous, they're heart-wrenching, um, but what they do is, I think for, I, I, for myself, I can't speak for Paul, is they keep me focused and so it is always our honor to present songs um, that have been written by kids through Kid Pen Alley. And I also want to remind you, um, I think it'll be in the chat, but it will, it'll eventually be scrolling across the bottom oh, of your screen. Oh, uh, actually. Oh, he's going to put that on now. across. Uh, there we go. Yeah, here's the. There we go. We always open up a tip jar. And the tip jar is for you to um, share uh, your um, uh, your applause and uh, your gratitude for these artists. You know, as you know, there aren't any venues to play in. There's no place where live music is taking place. And so the tip jar is divided amongst the performers performing this evening. So your generosity um, is something that they will appreciate greatly. So, Very Paul, much. I think we're going to do skin. Okay, and uh, I just saw... Go across my screen, a wonderful jo donation from our dear friends, John and Tracy Jackman. Thank you. So thanks, John and Tracy. You might have heard this one in the pre-show, but it's just such a beautiful song, and I think it's a very appropriate song. I want to know who you are. I want to judge you by your car. Can you speak the truth? Can you sing like Ray? I want to hear what you have to say. Skin, it can be pretty thin. Your skin, it's just the suit you're in. I want to know what's in your heart Don't matter if your skin is light or dark Don't care where you live or what you wear If you got cornrows or gray hair Your skin, it can be pretty thin Your skin, it's just the suit you're in Skin I had a dream about Dr. King What he stood for made us think That all God's children are just the same With different faces and different names Their skin, it can be pretty thin Their skin, it's just the suit they're in Skin, sing it with me Just be yourself, not some pseudonym in your skin. Oh, Cheryl, you look so 
Skin. So beautiful in your ring. Yes, you do, my, <laughs> my wrinkly skin. You need to love your skin. Give me some skin. All right. Thank you. <laughs> you know, kids are very prolific, and they um, sometimes they say things say things that we want to say. But as an adult, we might just be too afraid to say it. And And we overthink it too much. Uh, We do. It's one of the most powerful songs about racism. And it was written by fourth graders in a uh, small community in North North Carolina uh, where the school was almost 100% white. And they wanted to write about racism. And they wrote that beautiful song. It is. It's a beautiful song. So we're going to swing back to Mike Beck. So Mike... Usually you're traveling all over the world. So where have you been traveling lately? Or have you just kind of, has COVID kind of um, kept you? I'm drawing a lasso around the United States. I started, uh, well, in October, I was in Atlantic City, New Jersey, up to Woodstock, New York, over to Chicago, Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, Denver, Salt Lake City again, Santa Cruz, California, Los Angeles, California, Tucson, El Paso, Juarez, Mexico, uh, Houston, New Orleans last night, or two nights ago, and here I am in Destin, Florida. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a weird time to be traveling for sure, but when you don't really have a permanent address anywhere, it's, <laughs> you, that's the only option. But you call people up and say, hey, I'm coming through town, and they say, keep going these days, you know? So, uh, but it's all right. It's right. I've, I've been uh, very lucky and very fortunate and had some really beautiful experiences. I got to spend some time with my my sister and father, niece and nephew, and sister-in-law out in California, and wonderful. Did a couple week quarantine, couple COVID tests to make sure it was all safe, and uh, it was absolutely uh, a great opportunity to be out there with them. That's wonderful. So, what are you going to play for us? Well, this song uh, I wrote about 20 years ago with a friend of mine named Frank Curtis out of Camden, Tennessee. Frank's a brilliant uh, guitar player and songwriter, and. Uh, we worked together in a band in Salt Lake City years ago, and uh, it's called Port Swing, and we just recorded a, a new version of this uh, in Murfreesboro, Illinois, at a studio, Misunderstudio, and uh, Jared's gonna back me up on this one, and it's called Port Swing. God's our sway, each passing by a wave and hey, me and you, we are worlds away, holding for a distant day, me and you, we are worlds away. Jasmine carries on the summer breeze. I love to hear the thunder on a rainy day. The time we spend together in our passion play. Me and you, we are worlds away. Holding for a distant day. Me and you, we are worlds away.
Wonderful. Thank oh my you so God. much. Port you know Swing what? by Frank Curtis and myself. <laughs> that deserves a big round yeah. of applause there, Mike. I tell you what, I'm not going to be able to stay behind this mic. I'm going to be up dancing here. Get up, that's what Very I'm here clearly. for. Get up dancing, everybody. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I want to give a shout out to Nadia and Elaine and thank Pam and uh, Catherine for their donations. Um, folks, thank you so much. Your generosity means so much to everyone here this evening um, during this time. Um, it's just a great wish for a new year, and that's that's fantastic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. So, Mike, I mean, my gosh, you just keep rocking. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't stop. You know, <laughs> something got me pushed, gave me a push at the beginning, and here I keep rolling. So, yeah. Oh, well, we're That's glad you do. We're so glad that you Thanks so much for having me, guys. It's really Mike intriguing. Mike and somebody pleasure. asked us uh, uh, about uh, where can they find out about Song Camp Italy. And uh, is the Song Camp Italy website still up? The songcampitaly.com website is still up. Uh, some of the information is pertinent to what was going on last year. We do have tentative dates planned, uh, but we're waiting for final confirmation. Obviously, we're waiting for uh, the pandemic to, you know, uh, be uh, behind us so that we can all come together and uh, enjoy some fellowship and music in Italy together. That's such a, a magical place. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So we invite we all of you to there. come. Everybody should come. All right. My goodness. We're swinging back to John. Hey. 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 Uh, um, well, I thought I'd, I thought I'd do a kid's song. Um, oh, right. Right. Uh, before there was a Kid Pan Alley, uh, I was living in Charlottesville. It's where I raised my kids. And um, I would in inevitably be invited to come in and do a songwriting workshop with my kids' classes. Um, and as you all have no doubt found out, it's, it's like 5% art and 95% crowd control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it can gas. be, definitely. I, uh, well, I, you also want everybody to feel like they're participating. Mm -hmm. Like they've, you know, to quote your song, got some skin in the game. Um, <laughs> so I got a call uh, one year from the Discovery Museum, which is a wonderful children's museum right on the, I think it's right, still right on the downtown mall in Charlottesville. And they had gotten a grant from the telephone company or someplace, and they wanted to pres uh, me to produce a um, or write the music for an Earth Day video. So I went around to three schools. I went around to an Albemarle County High School. I went to a middle school, and I went to um, a third grade class at the Burnley Moran Elementary School. And the high school, at the high school, I was given all the, um, the uh, Governor's Honors Choir members. Whoa. And they wrote a song about saving the Amazon rainforest. And uh, I went to the middle school and I got the all-star band kids. And they wrote a song about saving the whales. And then I went to Mrs. Dowd's third grade class at the Burnley Moran Elementary School. And they wrote, uh, they wrote the best song of all. Um, and uh, I will, I'm gonna demythologize this song a little bit. I'm gonna <laughs> sing, I'm gonna sing the chorus, which, uh, which was just a brilliant chorus that they wrote. It goes, right in our own backyard, right in our own backyard. Here's a thing or two that kids can do in our Now, my approach to songwriting is, is completely informed by the fact that I started off uh, studying traditional music. And one of the things that traditional music uses a lot is a template. So it kind of sets up an architecture for the song uh, that you can plug things into, and that's what I employed in this particular workshop with these kids. So that you didn't have to have the, the variables didn't have to to rhyme or anything. You just had to make the scanage work. So every kid has a line in this song that they could point to and say, "That's my line." 
Sometimes grown-ups forget things it really isn't very hard Maybe we can teach them something new in our own backyard Right in our own backyard Right in our own backyard Here's a thing or two that kids can do in our own backyard You can walk to the store, you can ride your bike It really isn't very hard Recycle that can for another time in our own backyard Right in our own backyard Right in our own backyard Here's a thing or two that kids can do in our own backyard And it just it went on and on and on And uh, you can see some kid could say um, uh, you can bring your own bag to the grocery Right, you can bring your own bag to the grocery store. Really isn't very hard. And then the and then the sort of sullen kid back in the in the corner who never participated in anything says, well, you can pick up the garbage. You can pick up the garbage on your street and in your own. thing or two that kids can do in our own backyard. Now in this world there's plot problems and pollution, but it really isn't very hard for you to become a part of a solution in your own backyard. Right in our own backyard. Right in our own backyard. Here's a thing or two Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, um, I think a lot of kids have grown up with your music, John. I mean, you just, I, it's just amazing music. And, and you're right, it makes everybody feel like I could add a line to that, you know, and um, it's, well, it's, a, it's part of the process. You, you know, again, as though your listeners who are writers, and, and certainly Mike and, and you two, um, it's the second best feeling in the whole world. Yes. And you want to just, you know, once you do it, you want it to happen again. And I think the, um, probably the highlight for me was, was sort of getting these kids to a point where this one little girl, she was 10 years old, she came out to me, she said, you know, you've, you've ruined listening to the radio for me. <laughs> And I thought, mission right, accomplished, right. <laughs> mission accomplished. Because we, you know, we live in this, we live in this culture where, where, where we hire specialists to provide us entertainment. And, and certainly with folk music, uh, you know, in my study of it, this was something that, you know, belonged, nobody owned it, but it belonged to everybody. And the, the, the notion of taking back the tools to provide your own entertainment, one, and to be able to express yourself in a way uh, about the world around you, I, I mean, what's more powerful than that? I mean, that's, that's revolutionary. I know, but John, you make it, you, you facilitate that. You bring that out. Well, in you the guys, kid. It's, kid, kid, it's, it's the reason I'm here tonight, you know? I know. That's what so Kid amazing. Pan Alley is doing day in and day out. And um, it's why, you know, Kid Pan Alley deserves your support. Not not merely in the tip jar, but, in, <laughs> no. in, you know, annual giving and stuff like that. That's why I'm here. Well, I, I one, one member in our audience, actually a friend of mine, Nadia, uh, saw you two years ago at the Barnes mm -hmm. um, at Wolf Trap. And she said, she says, when will you be back? <laughs> Well, I was supposed to be back this last April, mm -hmm. and so they scheduled me for a year later, and that just got canceled. Oh. Um, but I'm doing I'm I'm doing a like everybody here. I'm doing a lot of online stuff, and I'm doing something in April that will be co-sponsored by the Barnes. But as far as in live and in person and all sweaty and smelly and stuff, 
uh, probably April of 22. Okay. I seem to be sort of at the tail end of their, their calendar. Well, everyone can go onto his website. You saw that on his screen and check out, you know, different online events. And I encourage everyone to do that. It's just a great way for everyone to come together. But before I introduce our next performer, I do want to take an opportunity to introduce our amazing executive director, Jen Jacobson. Um, she's on tonight, and we just finished an amazing, uh, just blow your mind kind of uh, fundraising, winter fundraising event in which we, the generosity from um, all of you who gave and those who um, gave through our community and through outreach, it touched our hearts because it's really going to be what sustains us and keeps us going through this pandemic and make sure that we can work with kids all over the country. And you know? amazingly, it was our uh, best fundraiser ever over the last 20 years by about $10,000. Uh, during COVID, and what an amazing thing it is to have that happen at a time like this. So, so thank, thank you, you all. Thank you for your generosity. So I don't see Jen, but we'll 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 catch up with her at okay. some point in time. So it is always an honor to introduce the next <laughs> performer because you know I I say this almost every concert, but it's true. Um, we have our own arrangement set up here. So Paul's studio, this studio is downstairs in the, the lower level of the house. My studio is two flights above. And I think that, you know, we meet for lunch and we meet for dinner. And then we have streaming movie time um, if we haven't worked too late. Yeah. Um, it's kind of been our pattern and how we have been able to... Um, and just enjoy each other and stay together this and entire the, time. <laughs> and the cool thing is, is, I mean, it used to be that the person I'd been to get together with the most in my life was John McCutcheon, because <laughs> we made about a dozen albums together, and I was with him more than I was ever with anybody. And, but now Cheryl is now in first place. Now I'm in first place. <laughs> And and it's been wonderful. But and I am so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does he still <laughs> snore? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we both do. We both keep it keep it rolling. But um, you know, Paul, his uh, musical career started what when you were twenty seven? Uh, well, twenty five. Twenty five. Um, a record contract. You know, um, playing uh, Hammer Dulcimers, of which he built and designed. Mm -hmm. um, so a long touring career, and then magically stumbling onto, you know, finding out that kids would become such an influential part of his, uh, the work and um, path that he would choose. Well, since I uh, never had children of my own, uh, I'm very grateful for the 65,000 children that I call my own now, uh, none of whom I have to pay for college for. That's not a bad way to do yeah, it. That's right. So ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, uh, Paul Reisler. Well, thanks, Cheryl. Um, so I'm gonna play an instrumental right now. Uh, this is a medley of two, uh, two tunes that were both the titles of uh, albums of mine. Uh, one is uh, Moon Run is the first one, which was a trapezoid album. And that's followed by Birth of a River, which is an album I did with uh, the great saxophone player, Bobby Reed. Um, let me see. Oops. There we go. For all you guitar players.
All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I see you clapping. Wow. I love that. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. I know. You know, it's it's always such a, a joy because um, in the evenings I can hear him rehearsing and practicing and playing his music, and it's very, very joyous, very joyous. So again, I want you to pay your, uh, draw your attention to what's scrolling across the bottom. We want to thank everyone for your donations, and um, as you are enjoying tonight, we hope that you will give, and you will give generously. Um, everything is uh, divided amongst the performers this evening, and it's just a great way to say thank you for the amazing music that you're hearing this evening. Um, we also want to give a shout out to all of our friends. Thank you for being with us. We have so many folks that come and join us every Sunday, and we certainly appreciate um, you being there with us every Sunday that rolls around. It's great. Um, so, Mike, we're swinging back to you, my friend. Hey, Paul, my band loves you. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, I love your band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they feel likewise. <laughs> hey, if I, if I may, I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to my friends Sean and Shelly from South Africa, who, whose home I am in. Uh, when, we, when we booked this, absolutely, Justin, when we booked this uh, date for the show, I didn't know where I was going to be. I thought I was going to be in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, I thought I was going to be in Tucson. I thought I was going to be in New Orleans, and it just so happens that I'm in Destin, uh, and I'm doing this from the home of my friend Sean and Shelly, and they let me bring in to them, strangers to them, into their house to do this live stream while they're at work. So I just want to say thank you, Sean and Shelly, for letting me do it. Yep. So uh, this song is, uh, I wrote it a few years back, and I've never performed it uh, publicly before. So you are the first to hear this song pretty much in the world. Happened to the girl I met The smile I saw I can't forget Happened to the boy she knew The things we dream believe were true Traveled down the road a ways And come to know a love Come to blows in love We learned some things before we met These things we learn we can't forget these things at times that helped us through These things they burn and hurt us too Trying to love the best I'm able Brought the chaos to your table You lit my love when the flames had died But the fire's damp, the tears we've cried Is it time to go, my love? Have we got nothing to give but up? Strains against my very essence and violates all my blessings. I love you like love no other, but I feel as if our fire's been smothered. Have we got nothing to give? Nothing to give but up. shared a dream a love so bright her eyes would gleam love we never felt before so damn strong and so damn sure fit just like a violin and bow from our first day holding fast we knew the rain just couldn't last what happened to the girl i met what happened to the boy she knew how did we let our love slipped past. Don't let be true that we've got nothing to give. Nothing to give. Nothing to give but up. Thank you. So when did you write that? Oh, I guess about 10 years ago. And uh, I always knew it was a finger picking song. Right. But I only, my, uh, when I came back from our European tour, I was on tour with Rahel, 
uh, in Switzerland last March. And when I came back to the US, I was quarantined in Woodstock, New York uh, for 10 weeks. And I had never finger picked before. I couldn't, I did not know how to finger pick. And my, my quarantine project last spring was to learn how to finger pick. And that's why that song's never been performed because I knew it had to be finger picked and I didn't know how to do it. So I learned how to finger pick so I could play that song. It sounded as though you've been finger picking all your life. That was. Oh, weird. you're very that's sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, it's we been have a lot of fun. It's totally opened up new dimensions of the guitar for me. So it's been really a, a lot of songs I used to do as uh, strummers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm new. I'm now exploring what they're like as a finger picking tune. So wonderful. That oh. is wonderful. And Thanks we have some people we'd, like we'd like to thank here, th especially you, Mike, for the great song, uh, but also for the people who've donated tonight. Uh, Jim Broyles, our old friend from uh, uh, song camp there in Rocky Mountain Song School, and uh, Jen, Jen Cleary, also from there. Mara thank you, Jen. Beckerman, Joanna Halberston. Um, I don't think I said that right. Nutritional Innovations, uh, Patricia and Jeff Highland. Now, Jeff was my best friend in high school. So we go back even further than John McCutcheon <laughs> and I. And uh, dear friend Nadia and Paul and Heather Savage and uh, uh, Nancy Chase and Gail Swift and Barney and Mary O'Mara. Woo, thank, thank you all. all. Thank you all. That's so amazing. And just it makes it just means a lot to everyone uh, during these times um, you know operating and working in the nonprofit world especially working in the music um, being a performer or uh, even music working uh, with kids it's just been such um, a surreal time um, and unfortunately it or maybe fortunately, I should say, it's also been a time when kids really, as well as adults, need to be able to share how they're feeling. And um, being quarantined, like you were talking about, Mike, you know, being quarantined for 10 weeks, there's a lot that goes on in your mind. There's a lot that goes on in your heart. Um, and you have a tendency to begin to look at the world in a, uh, through different eyes. And so I think that, you know, the songwriting being able to share it in this creative way is just such a beautiful way to, to get to be able to share those emotions and get those feelings out. So we're going to swing back to John, who's quarantined in that, not quarantined right now, but in that beautiful, beautiful studio with all those instruments. Do you play all those instruments, John? To various degrees of competence, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, One of the... John one Johnny Cash said you were the best instrumentalist he ever heard, so uh, I'd say it's a pretty high degree of, comp of competentness. Well, there's a, there's a lot of instruments around here that I, that I play in the, pro you know, I've got a Swedish nickel harpa on the, on the wall over here, and I've got a Cajun accordion and a hurdy-gurdy and an oud. <laughs> I love it. Over <laughs> here, and I just... Many of them are souvenirs uh, of cultures that I visited, and I bring them home. And uh, I, I love sound, and I love the way that music, as long as music has been with us, has filled the silence in so many mm -hmm. amazing and creative ways. So uh, there's there's lots of stuff I will never play outside of this room. <laughs> uh, I understand, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I, I, I once told a workshop that the secret to good performance is knowing more what not to do on stage yes. than what to do. <laughs> so I have one question for you, John. Uh huh. If you could only take one instrument with you, which one would it be? Oh, man. Well, after years of hauling six different instruments around all over the world, uh, I, I think I'm going to come back as a harmonica player. <laughs> you and Howard, yeah. okay. I think Howard had it all figured out. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, totally. I mean, and plus, Howard can play in every key on one yeah. diatonic uh, yeah. harmonica. Go figure. Yeah. Well, I thought I would do one... Uh, um, uh, that... 
has its beginnings in one adventure that Paul and I took back in the mid-1980s. Uh, we traveled down to Nicaragua at the, at the invitation of the uh, artists' union there. And we spent, what was it, Paul, three weeks? Yeah, something like that, three or four weeks. And uh, some of it was visiting uh, different places, and, and then uh, we went around and started recording uh, musicians all over the country. And then I went back about six months later, and uh, the result was a, was a double album called Nicaragua Presente. But the real find on that trip uh, was meeting and falling in love with one of my best friends, uh, a fellow by the name of Eduardo Baez, yes. who has a really interesting history. Um, Eduardo was the son of one of Samosa's generals, and, uh, uh, and his father and Samosa were romantic rivals. And his father was also one of the leaders of an abortive coup against the dictator, which was betrayed at the last minute, which caused the dictator to come to his house and murder, torture and murder Eduardo's father in front of the family. Oh my so uh, it's probably no surprise that Eduardo um, joined the Sandinistas as rebels against the Somoza regime. And after the, the triumph of that revolution, um, uh, because of his level of education, he was made the assistant uh, uh, director of adult education. Um, like many young idealistic revolutionaries, uh, he soon became disillusioned, uh, said uh, this is not what we fought for, and uh, left the government and left the party and uh, was essentially unemployable, except as a translator, which is how I met him in the mid-1980s. And we became fast friends, and uh, years later, I found myself the chair of the board of a children's literacy project called Libros para Niños in Nicaragua. And, and my final and finest act as chair before I left the board was to hire Eduardo as the uh, executive director of this children's literacy program and he really flourished and eventually he got this program Libros para Niños which were mobile libraries. Libraries are an unknown quantity in much of Latin America and reading to children from picture books almost didn't exist before this program and Eduardo managed to negotiate um, because of his contacts in the education world there Libros para Niños into every school in Nicaragua and I remember getting a phone call from him from the Managua airport he was waiting to board a flight to go to, to El Salvador where he was going to start a program to bring Libros para Niños into every school in El Salvador. And he laughed and said, you know, Juancito, that's what he used to call me, Juancito, when we first met, your government accused people like me of exporting revolution. And now, I actually am. Eduardo died a few years ago, and this is a song that I wrote after learning of his death. I put down the phone, repeat every word, the knife in my breast, the news I just heard. The heartbroken shards of my heart on the floor And I swear I won't answer the phone anymore If you can't take it with you, then where did it go? I know it was here just a moment ago There's a big empty space where something belongs don't know what it is, but it's gone. The email you sent, the call just last week, the 
visit next summer the words we won't speak all rushing upon me jumbled and strange the years in the making the instant of change well if you can't take it with you then where did it go i know it was here just a moment ago there's a big empty space where something belongs don't know what it is but it's gone Nothing is given, no false guarantee, some small act of kindness offered for free. Frozen in time, a face in the crowd, memories, mother, living out loud. Two dates carved in granite, a line in between. Life in the balanced, chiseled and clean. A small bunch of flowers, a heart full of hurt. A prayer for the living, a handful of dirt. If you can't take it with you, then where did it go? I know it was here just a moment ago. There's a big empty space. Something belongs, don't know what it is, but it's gone. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. I could listen to you all night. I know we don't have all night, but it's just um, the story. Just so tell everyone where to get to, to find your music, John, so that we can listen to you all night on nights when we in, hear your in voice. dumpsters across America. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on. That's where all my CDs are going to. Yeah, uh, my my website is right up here in the corner. It's believe it or not, it's folkmusic.com. If anybody deserves that, absolutely, website, it's you, John. Do nobody you? nobody had it. That's surprising. <laughs> shows, you, shows you what a big you know blip folk music is out there. Well, my uh, my son who works in the in the technology world said, Dad. You're going to sell that domain someday for hundreds of dollars. Yeah? <laughs> hundreds. I think it's probably more like tens of thousands now. Uh, I, no, no. no. So, hey, everyone, that was Ryan Benio. Ryan is like our savior for all engineering sound. He's the one... He's the one that holds the glue together for this production. So everyone say hi to Ryan, wave your hands, and um, give him a big round of applause because yeah. we couldn't do it without you. Yeah. And I just saw uh, pop across the screen uh, our dear friend Betsy Douglas uh, from Shark. Ah, Betsy. And yeah. So John and Betsy are friends, and Betsy's one of our closest friends. Oh, that's wonderful. And, this was, and it was Jay's birthday this last week. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. So I want to give a real shout out just uh, briefly to Don, Mark, Elena, Jim, Jeff, and Allison. Thank you so much for your donations. If I don't have your name listed down, we're, we're sort of behind the scenes trying to, you know, keep updating that list. But I also want to give you a chance to find out who's coming next, next concert. So our Thank next you. concert is going to be January 24th. So you want to circle. That's a Sunday at 7 p.m. And we're going to have... One of John and I know um, um, Mike's favorites, Issei Barnwell. Ah. Issei's going to be joining us and leading us in all kinds of uh, amazing musical experiences. Yes. Issei and is a force of nature. She is a force of nature. She uh, sang with Sweet Honey in the Rock for over 30 years. And, 
Uh, but what an amazing personality. Just an amazing is. voice. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And Maura Smiley will be joining us. So it's going to be back, kind of back to ladies' night. We kind of do hmm. this back and forth thing. But we hope that you'll come and join us. And John and Mike, we hope if you have some time, you'll join us too and see your old friends. It'll be wonderful, a fantastic concert. So we have a song okay. that... Um, we, Paul wrote this with kids who were transitioning. They were in families that had were experiencing homelessness. And um, in D.C., they had this program where they helped families transition from being homeless to um, finding ho housing for them. And they were invited to go visit the Corcoran which no longer is Corcoran, uh, Gallery, of the Corcoran Art. Gallery of Art, which is no longer a gallery in D.C., but it was has such a historic um, It was the history. oldest uh, uh, art gallery in the United States, I think. Right. It's just amazing, amazing gallery. And so he took these children into the Corcoran, and they got a chance to select an artwork, and the artwork would become their inspiration for their song. So Paul... Why don't you tell us about what inspired the song? So there was uh, uh, this about 30 foot tall sc metal sculpture of uh, 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 wrapped up in chains and uh, of a heron wrapped up in chains and stuck in the mud. And I said uh, to the kids, how does that make you feel? And one of the little boys said, it makes me feel like we should never give up and that we should always dream. So we wrote the song called We Need No Excuse for Dreaming. It's a beautiful song. Uh, I think we recorded it on one of our albums here. Um, and I just totally love this song. And what was interesting is after we uh, wrote the song, we, uh, we had a concert there in the, in the auditorium at the Corcoran. We sent a bus over to pick up the kids and their families. And the kids took the uh, their parents around the museum and showed them the artwork that they'd written songs about. And this is my sculpture. <laughs> this is my painting. And, uh, you know, none of those kids had ever been in a gallery before and probably and I don't think none their of their parents, parents had, had either. either. And so it was quite a beautiful experience for us. So uh, when we were talking about songs to do for this week, I think this song really speaks to our new year. Um, I think it speaks for... Um, our hopes and dreams. We need no excuse for dreaming. And I'm not sure what key you do it in, Cheryl. Let's just play and I'll uh, sing it. We'll see if this one works. It's a little low. Uh, I can't really go much higher than that. Okay. I'll do it. I can do low. Okay. I can be like you say and go low. Okay. All right, I'll <laughs> go down here. That works too. Which is better for you? That one's better. Okay. That's my key. That's your key? Okay. okay. Oh, we need no excuse for dreaming. We need no excuse to fly. Even though we may get stuck. We must keep on trying To break free from the chains of time To always be free in our minds We need no excuse for dreaming We need no excuse to fly Sometimes I get tangled up in life I weave like a spider that's caught in its web It's hard to escape Cut through the red tape and get those nightmares out of my head. So I dream of singing my song to the wind that opens up my heart once again. We need no excuse for dreaming. We need no excuse to fly. Even though we may get stuck must keep on trying to break free from the chains of time to always be free in our minds we need no excuse for 
for dreaming Need no excuse to fly Sometimes I think I could touch the clouds Go anywhere, do anything Float in midair, fly across the mountains Just like that heron, I'll spread my wings So I dream of singing my song to the wind that opens up my heart once again Oh, we need no excuse for dreaming We need no excuse to fly Even though we may get stuck We must keep on trying To break free from the chains of time To always be free in our minds Need no excuse for dreaming. We need no excuse to fly. Oh, we need no excuse for dreaming. We need no excuse to fly. We need no excuse. We need We got it there. We got, got it, it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. This has been such an amazing evening, and I just don't want it to stop. So I hope Mike and John, you got another round in you. Yes? And All Justin, right. come in a little closer. Come in a little closer so my friends can see it. Ready, boy. We're wel welcoming Justin right back to the All right. stage of Sean Shelley's house. Yeah, you see, that sound great. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, boss, the tune. I dig it. So, so uh, Justin, let me tell you a couple things to the crowd here. Uh, this next song, uh, I was going to do another original song, and then uh, the events of the week unfolded, and uh, I realized the song that I need to sing to myself every day, and maybe other people need to hear this song as well, was written by a guy named Chet Powers. He performed under the name Dino Valenti. He went on to form a band called Quicksilver Messenger Service. Uh, but in 1964, he wrote a song. He wrote this song. It was recorded by the Kingston Trio. And then a few years later, uh, it was made into a big hit by the Youngbloods. And I hope everybody out there will take this message to heart. I know it's hard. It may take time, but we got to remember this message if we can. So sing along with me, everybody. Love is but a song we sing Fear's the way we die You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry You know the dove is on the wing But you may not know Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. Some may come and some may go, we shall surely pass. When the one who left us here Returns for us at last We are but a moment's sunlight Fading in the grass Come on people now 
smile on your brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now Jared Reynolds, people. the song I sing you will understand listen you hold the key to love and fear all in your trembling hand just one key unlocks them both it's there your command Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. I say, come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. I say, come on, people now. Everybody get together, try to love one another right now, right now. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, John. And thank you to all everybody listening. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Oh, we have been so excited. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Justin. We're so happy to have you. It's so a wonderful time. Yeah. Thank you. One, yeah. We're just. Uh, yeah, you well, know, after uh, I think we'll close it out with John and then uh, we'll stop the Facebook and YouTube streams and uh, open up the Zoom room. Zoom and, room and we can, uh, we can all and, chat and, and everybody can say like hi that. to one another. Yeah. But I want to just give a shout out and a thank you to Shell and Betsy and Allison. Thank you for your donations. And we just appreciate it. Uh, it's scrolling across the bottom. You can use PayPal or Venmo. Or if for some reason technology is not your friend this evening, which does happen to all of us, you can just go on the Kid Penelli website and uh, you can donate that way. And that way we'll share it with all the artists that have been here tonight. And it's just been so exciting and so energetic. <laughs> oh my goodness. So John, I saw you playing on the piano were you were you singing along well I was certainly playing along that's that was um, <laughs> when I was in high school I had a I had a, a, a I was in a rock and roll band a really terrible <laughs> rock and roll band <laughs> that as was ironically called the diplomats uh, and uh, I'm just trying to imagine you in a rock and roll band oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah I was the lead oh, guitar no. player and wow. um, and that song was our encore at all our gigs. Really? Both of them. <laughs> and I, I think we did that uh, when we did that uh, uh, Trapezoid and McCutcheon tour, I think. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the, the, the reconstituted and resurrected Trapezoid, the, the Winter Solstice tour. <laughs> reconstituted. And regurgitated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> Well, I thought I would, um, this is another new song, and uh, uh, one, of the, one of the people that I have been completely geeking out with um, during this pandemic, just trying to figure out how to get all this technology to work so these things look good and they sound good, uh, is a dear friend of mine from Bloomington, Indiana, a wonderful songwriter named Carrie Newcomer. And she and I are both Quakers. And um, 
So we have lots to talk about, and I wrote this for her as a Christmas. And, and, and we talked frequently through the election uh, season, which was a trial for Quakers, um, and for everybody, actually. Um, and uh, this is a song I wrote as a Christmas gift to her. That's for all of you, actually. Midst the roiling of the world all around you, be still. And everything conspires to confound you, be still. When they feed you one more lie, and you know you've had your fill, be still. When you Realize the fools will go to any length, be still. When you need to find a way to gather up your strength, be still. They don't understand true power, and you know they never will. Be still. When you feel your heart despairing and you don't know where to turn, when you're looking for your bearing, as the waves upheave and churn Nothing is more daring than the willingness to learn Be still, be still Thomas Merton and the Buddha came before you Be still, offering examples to explore you Be still, emptiness to overflowing if you only will be still It is defense against the madness That roars on every side Relief against the sadness That rolls on you like a tide If you seek the gladness That's a sure and steady guide Be still Be still If you need to rally be still, you first might seek the center of your source. Be still, at the fringes of the fight, it might work against your will. Accepting that the battle will forever be uphill. It takes belief and patience to muster all your skill. That's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, John, that's beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Well, well, well. And what a message for all of us. Yeah. Just still. be still. Oh my gosh, folks, this has been such an amazing evening. John McCutcheon has been with us all evening. Mike Beck joined with Justin and Jared. And uh, we want to thank all of you for being with us this evening. Now, don't forget on the 24th, January 24th, which is Sunday at 7 p.m., you can come and join us and we'll have Issei Barnwell and we'll have uh, Maura Smiley, another great concert in yes, the lineup. Concert of primarily of vocal music. Yes. Mm -hmm. Both of them concert are amazing singers. So come and be prepared to sing because you know Issei, she, while she'll sing songs um, in performance, she'll want you to join in. So yes. bring, bring your singing voice. And, oh uh, my gosh. So uh, uh, I'm gonna play a little short uh, outro which will have uh, Maura Smiley singing on it, since many of you don't know Maura's music. And uh, also it says something about, uh, there's a wonderful concert series on Tuesday nights from our friends at In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And they have done the most amazing job of tech that I have seen uh, since the pandemic. Uh, and so there'll be a little thing about that. And Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you all for being Zoom here Zoom room, with us. hang out with us because yep. we're going to um, open it up and uh, 
questions and everyone can say hi to one another. But to the rest of uh, our Facebook land and all of the other streaming sources that you've been watching us through this evening, we want to thank you for being with us, and we look forward to seeing you on the 24th. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Sing soft now. Did the world beat me down? Cause back then I sang hard, I sang proud. Where are the 